and welcome to another episode of explore by mopa this is shriranjani santana gopalan and today a great honor has been bestowed upon me it is to talk about the ethereal music of shri k v narayana swami or palaghat kollangod vishwanathan narayana swami to many the acronym k v n is an emotion it is synonymous with godly music or spiritual elevation of sorts i strongly believe that this is an episode that needs to be explored through the lens of several musicians it needs to be several episodes because his music is an unending saga uh, but today i will be talking about a few points that stood out to me a few unique points about his music that stood out to me and i hope you enjoy as a vocalist i cannot but help notice the perfection in his voice technique so i would like to talk about that in detail i gather from his close associates and uh, his students that he did not believe in hours and hours of practice because it brought about a certain uh, rote quality or a certain template to one's music but uh, he as a vocalist solidified and perfected his technique early on in his journey and slightly modified it along the way to suit the aging and the weathering of the voice it is so beautiful to see that journey and in fact in one of his lecture demonstrations he talked about the varamb of the voice or the limitations of the voice and how you have to customize your music according to it mukhyama enna gavanikkum kata idu romba periya rahasyam onnum alla ana periya rahasyam da அதாவது தன்னுடைய சாரீர வரம்பு தெரியணும் தன்னுடைய சாரீரத்தினுடைய ஸ்ட்ரென்த் தெரியணும் அப்புறம் கேட்கிற ஜனங்கள் இருக்கா அப்புறம் அது கேட்கிற ஜனங்களை தான் அவர் அவர் எப்படி வச்சுருந்தா தெரியுமோ சாரீர கட்டி இருந்தா கூட கட்சியை கேன்சல் பண்ண மாட்டார் அந்த கட்டின சாரீரத்திலையும் அவர் பாட 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 கட்டின சாரீரம் வெளி வாங்கி படிச்சுனாரு அதுதான் அந்த உத்தம சாரீரங்கிறதுக்கு அடையாளம் சில சாரீரங்கள்லாம் ஆரம்பிக்கிறவங்களும் அசத்தியமா வீக்காரமா இருக்கும் முடிக்கிறவங்க தொண்டை கட்டி அது என்ன காரணம் அதை சிந்தனை பண்ணும் அப்போ அந்த சாதன முறையில ஏதோ ஒரு உறுதி எனக்கு தொடர்ந்து அப்படி ஆர்வமா இருந்தால் இந்த அடக்கி பாடி சாதனை பண்ணுடைய பலனாக அது இருக்கும் என் மனசுக்கு வரும் வாய் வந்து இப்ப எதை சொன்னாலும் வாய் விட்டு பார்த்தோம்னா அது மாதிரி முடாம ஆணு வந்து ஒரே கத்தலா கத்தணுமா கத்தவும் கூடாது என்ன மனதவும் கூடாது சங்கீதத்துக்கு சங்கீதத்துக்கும் கத்தலுக்கும் சம்பந்தமே இல்லை அது கத்த சங்கீதம் செஞ்சுதோ ஹி யூஸ் டு சே சங்கீதத்துக்கும் சத்தத்துக்கும் சம்பந்தமே இல்லை எதுக்கு கத்தணும் இஸ் வாட் ஹி யூஸ் டு சே he believed in open throated singing something that stands out to all of us vocalists is that that slight <laughs> that kind of singing that thrust that he gives which is easy on the voice it it gives that certain effect and everything is covered in that like it is a very very unoffensive technique and that is something that is admired by most vocalists so it is believed that uh, in his early days of practice he used to put a pot over his head and practice when you put a pot over your head it's kind of like a monitor like you can closely monitor the details in your singing and really perfect and hone your technique when you do that and i think it's a genius thing that he did uh 
these days as musicians we use a mic system and a headphone to monitor our singing but i think putting a pot over your head is a genius way of monitoring your own singing and i heard that shri kavi narayana swami used to do that and also i believe that uh, as humans especially musicians tend to imitate the sounds that they hear and i think that sonorous you know hearing yourself with that reverberation and that sonorous quality i think that also brought about that sonorous effect in his voice you can hear that continuity and that all pervasive uh, ness in his music um, and i think it might be because of this 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 just my theory something that is very interesting that i notice about his music is that he has this penchant for upper octaves like he has this habit of hitting the panchamam directly what is interesting about it is that the the masculinity if i may say so is still intact but it is so sweet there is not an ounce of harshness in the way he goes directly to the male panchamam and as a vocalist it is something i admire because it is it is something that requires a lot of thought and uh, a lot of practice uh, to achieve that perfect middle ground between sweetness as well as that that effect that throw so um, here are a couple of clips where you can see the way he has directly gone to the panchama Hey, I hear you. 
It is also believed that Hindustani musicians greatly admired his music and used his recordings as a reference uh, for their research on Carnatic music. A very interesting thing, thing that I noticed was uh, there is a very uh, uh, famous website called parikar.org uh, where there is a plethora of Hindustani recordings. It's a very famous one, but it only carries a very few Carnatic recordings and most of them are of Shri K. V. Narayana Swami. So that goes to say something, right? Uh, in fact, uh, Kumar Gandharva's son, Mukul Shivputra, K. V. N. himself has said this in his lecture demonstration. He went to the National Center to listen to a bunch of Carnatic music recordings and he was so enamored with uh, Shri K. V. N.'s music that he wanted to learn from K. V. N. and he approached him. And apparently, K. V. Narayana Swami heard him sing and uh, he said, Listen, your approach is completely, while you're a great musician, your approach is completely different, the way you pronounce words. So why don't you stick to Hindustani and really hone that craft? And uh, maybe you can just listen to Carnatic for uh, recreation or to imbibe some aspects. You don't have to go in depth into Carnatic music. For me, as a musician, this is a lesson because to me, it, it shows the clarity with which he approached music, the compartmentalization, um, the conviction, right? You can't do everything. You do a few things and do it properly. That actually explains the purity in his music and the raktitvam, right? Uh, or the kalappadam illa the music. There is no adulteration in his music. And uh, that we can see very clearly when he sings a varali. The raktitvam is, it is so packed with raktitvam and intensity. That's because he was, he, he had conviction, he had clarity about what he was doing. And um, that is a greatly admirable quality. <laughs>
تغري Recording of KVN's Ambapahi in Natakurunji. This song and the Manodharmam that follows is fully in the upper octaves. Completely. It's a 25 minute clip. What I noticed is there is no fatigue both for the singer as well as the listener. Usually when you when you listen to somebody sing in the upper octaves for a prolonged period of time it, it's, it sets a certain fatigue. But when you listen to this clip it is absolutely refreshing and there is not so i think that's because of the perfect vocal technique there is not a smidgen of harshness it's all sweetness and when you listen to it it's like how does he do this Oh, <laughs> 
his fidelity to the shruti or the pitch perfection no matter what he sang every note had that pitch perfection he almost had an ocd with when it came to tuning tanpuras no matter where he traveled he insisted that the tambura that he is going to be using for the evening should reach him at the venue where he is staying on the morning of the concert he used to insist upon that and he used to spend hours and hours tuning the tambura and perfecting it there is a very beautiful again uh, an excerpt from his lecture demonstration where he talks about how he tunes the tambura and it can be done in 20 minutes as well as 2 minutes it's so it is a very important lesson for vocalists to learn because many of us overlook the manual tambura and uh, the process of tuning it actually it is a very important thing to set the stage and the manual tambura is the one that is the most important in setting the stage and he talks about that in the lecture demonstration na povaradu kumbhu povaradu na povaradne modalle tambura ange thodu and the tambura vachi ada kandi maati anna shuti ki cheti adalla clean panni vachi adha enna thodi ava என்ன இந்த பையன் தம்புரா பார்த்துட்டு இருக்கேன் அப்படின்னு அவருக்கு தோணும் நான் அது வாங்க போகணும்னு சொன்னால் அது வீட்டுக்கு விட்டு எல்லாம் ரெடி பண்ணி சாயங்காலம் போல வச்சு போயிடுச்சு ஏன்னா என்னை கட்சியில் தம்பூராவ இந்த பக்கம் ஒரு தடவை கூட சிந்து பார்த்துக்கிட்டாரு பார்த்தா நான் ஏதோ மிஸ்டேக் பண்ணிட்டே எனக்கு மனசுக்கு தாங்க ஐயோ சிந்து பார்த்துட்டாரே அப்படி நான் என்ன பண்ணிட்டோம் இன்னைக்கு தோணும் ஏன்னா அவர் சிந்து பார்க்காத ஏன் பார்க்குறாரு ஏதோ தம்புராவில் ஏதோ ஒரு சுற்றி இது சரியா இல்லைன்னாக்க பார்க்குறா இருக்கும் அது இல்லாதது பர்ஃபெக்டா வச்சு விட்டார் அதுதானே நமக்கு டியூட்டி இன்சிஷனா வந்து தெரியுது இதெல்லாம் பார்க்க நீங்க என்ன பண்ணிட்டு இருக்காரு அப்போ அப்போ அவரே இந்த பயல் இந்த தம்பூரா இவ்வளவு கவனிச்சு பண்றேன்னு பாக்குறேன்னு அவர் மனசுக்கு போட்டு வச்சிருக்காரு உங்களுக்கு அப்புறம் போக போக என்னன்னா இன்னைக்கு ஒரு கச்சேரி நாளைக்கு ஒரு கச்சேரி வரிசையா வரும் அப்புறம் ரெண்டா நாராயணா எல்லாம் பார்த்துட்டு தம்புரெல்லாம் அண்ணா பார்த்துட்டேன் எல்லாம் சுற்றி பார்த்து வச்சிருக்கியோ என்ன நம்பிக்கை இருக்கணும் சுற்றி பார்த்து வச்சுட்டியோன்னு அவர் கேட்கிறார் அவ்வளவு நம்பிக்கை அது அதாவது நான் ஒவ்வொரு கச்சேரியிலும் நேற்று இந்த சுற்றி பாடியிருக்கார் இன்னைக்கு கொஞ்சம் அவரோட அபிப்பிராயத்தில் துணி குறைச்சி வச்சுன்னா அவருக்கு கொஞ்சம் வசதியா இருக்குமோன்னு என் மனசுக்கு படுறது இன்னும் குறைச்சிருக்கேன் இவன் எப்படி பண்ணியிருக்கான்னு அவருக்கு ஏற்றி இருக்கானா பட் எங்க செக்மா ஏற்றி இருக்கானான்னு இல்ல ஏற்றிருக்கானா தெரியாது சேர்த்திருக்கேன் எங்கடா வீட்டு ஆ சரி பரவாயில்ல சாப்பிட்டு ஒரு கட்சியில மணியர் வாழ் பசங்கம் இதெல்லாம் இந்த நிகழ்ச்சி எல்லாம் உங்களுக்கு சொல்றது கிடைக்காது என்ன பேச வைக்கிறேன்னா பேச வராது இன்னைக்கு என்ன சொல்ல வரது மட்டும் தான் சொல்றேன் மணிவாழ் என்ன பண்ணார் மதங்கத்தை கொண்டு வந்துட்டார் மணிவாழ் என்ன பண்ணுவார் தன்னோட மதங்கம் குறைச்சலாக கூடுதலாக இருந்தாலும் பாரவாழ்வு சுத்திக்கு தான் அவர் சேர்த்துக்கணும் என்னால் இந்த சுத்திக்கு என் மதங்கத்துக்கு என்னோட மதங்கத்துக்கு உன் குரலை அரைக்கி இந்த சுத்தி அரைக்கணும்னு அவர் கேட்க மாட்டார் அவர் என்ன பண்ண ஒரு பாட்டு பாருங்க பாட்டு விட்டுட்டு ஏ கொஞ்சம் ஏற்றுறா அப்படின்னா சுத்தி ஏற்றுட்டார் ஏன்னா அவருக்கு என்னவோ சம்திங் ஒரு ஒரு ஜிகிப்சை சுற்றி போகிறல என்னான்னு நம்ம தைரியமாக நாமளா என்ன பண்ணுவோமா ஒரு சொல்ல ஏற்றுறான் விட்டார் ஏற்றுறான்னா அஞ்சு அஞ்சு நிமிஷம் உட்காந்து சேர்த்துட்டு இருக்கிறதா ஒரு நிமிஷம் நீ சேர்க்கணுமே இந்த தம்பூராக நீங்க சேர்க்கறது என்ன எதுல மார்க்குன்னு கேட்டா எவ்வளவு குவிக்கா எவ்வளவு சீக்கிரமா நீ சேர்க்கிறான் என்று தான் அவன் மார்க்கே உரிய நீ பத்து நிமிஷம் உட்காந்து வீட்டு இருந்தா ஆறு கேட்டுட்டு இருப்பா அவங்க சுற்றி சேர்க்கிறத கச்சேரியில் அவர் ஏற்றி சொல்லி ஆயிடுச்சு சரி அதுக்குதான் இந்த ஏற்றி சொல்லும் போது அந்த பிறகு ரெடியா நம்ம கை அதுகிட்ட போகணும் இங்க பார்த்தா அண்ணா இங்க உட்காந்து இருக்கிற அவர் அவர் வந்து தள்ளி விட்டு இங்க வச்சுன்னு வச்சு வந்து ஏற்ற முடியுமா எவ்வளவு கட்சியில பார்க்க வேண்டிய ஒரு லவ் ஹீலிங் எல்லாம் இருக்கு கேட்கறோம் இந்த பயர்னா இப்படி சேர்க்கிறான்னு ரூபாய் அதெல்லாம் கேட்கக்கூடாது அப்படி எல்லாம் வரக்கூடாது எனக்கு நான் அதுல எந்த காரியத்தையும் கூடுமானவர்கள் என் புத்திக்கு தெரிஞ்சு தப்பா செய்யக்கூடாதுங்கிற சங்கல்பத்தோட தான் அவர்கிட்ட நான் போயிருக்கேன் இப்போ அதுக்கு நான் அங்க அந்த ஜாஸ்தியா இருக்கேன்டாமோ சேர்த்தி 
எதுக்கு இது சொல்ல வந்தேன்னு கேட்டா எங்க அண்ணாவுக்கு தம்பூரா இருந்தா பேர் கொண்டு இருக்கணும் அதுக்கு முன்னாடி எல்லாம் தம்பூரான்னு ஒண்ணு இருக்கும் ஆனால் அவ்வளவு சாரீரத்துல அந்த தம்பூரா சவுண்ட் உண்டு சார் அது 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 கேட்டவாள்தான் அந்த அந்த ரீக்காரம் வந்து தெரியும் True to the school that he hailed from, the Arya Kodi Bani, we all know that Arya Kodi was uh, responsible for the current concert template. He also very strongly believed in the Kacheri Paddhati or the template. Um, he strongly believed in starting the Kacheri with the Varnam and ending with Tukadas. In fact, uh, in his lecture demonstration, he has spoken very, very at length and very uh, passionately about the um, varnams in particular he has spoken about how they are very important they are code they are the code uh, for a ragam for a raga lakshana um, and uh, how they really set the kala pramanam or the pace uh, of a concert um, and he is also very endearingly spoken about rendavada or ninne nara naminanu pota da and the kacheri kala katto um just seeing his guru bhakti and how he spoke about his guru how he used to deliberately make mistakes when he learned from his guru so that he can hear him sing that line again and again when his peers like tmt and uh, shri ramnath krishnan all of them were singing like long pallavis and few songs in their concert list kvn really packed his concerts with many songs a variety of songs in a variety of kala pramanams uh, kala pramanams as in pace when i speak about the pace of a kriti uh, the pace of a song i have to mention here about his penchant for random katan kala pramanam or that middle ground kala pramanam which is very off beat it is a very tricky kala pramanam to uh, maneuver really nirnayam pandrathu you know i have to say some words in my mother tongue because there is it's an emotion nirnayam pandrathu basically means managing that kala pramanam it needs management it is not it's a very off beat kala pramanam which doesn't unless you have that that perfect layam or that perfect um tempo in you it is very difficult to manage that and especially if you hear um, especially songs like echarika garara or badalika dira in that rendu katta kala pramanam it is not easy uh, because um, somebody like ragu sir romba vishamama vasipar in the sense romba he he plays in a very tricky manner a very uh, some solos that will throw you off but kvn has just maintained his cool and he has just maintained that pace so beautifully and is very very inspiring for musicians which is why we call him a musician's musician is really owned by kvn i would say there are many such songs but this one in particular i've never seen anybody explore this song in this space but shri kv narayan swami it is ambananu in todi which is a composition of anayya a very rare kriti but look at the pace in which he's handled it and because of that pace that he has taken up it gives way to so many beautiful unique sangatis let's enjoy that Yeah. <laughs> 
handled super fast krithis and the way he has sung swarams for it as a vocalist i'm telling you it is very inspirational and it's very very difficult because when you take a kala pramanam like that you either tend to speed it up a bit or slow it down because you're unsure of the you know at that pace you're like unsure if you can deliver the swarams so you might slow it down or because of panic you will just speed it up but that brahmalayam again i am going to come back to that perfect tempo uh, he has maintained that tempo throughout and that requires a certain balance a certain equilibrium a certain peace within yourself to be able to do that it's very inspirational in the same lecture demonstration uh, kvn has spoken at length about how his guru used to plan his concert um, and how he used to prepare for his concerts so that is very interesting to hear he has spoken about how his guru knows the pulse of the audience or what the audience expects 
when they come to his concert. And uh, KVN really imbibed that too because he knew that the audience was at the end of the day waiting for that vritam um, or that jagadu dharana or that sagara shainavibhu and he delivered.
தக்கராஜ கோபாலர் ராஜ கோபாலர் தவம் செய்தி வடிவே தக்கராஜ கோபாலர் தவம் செய்தேத்து ஒளி வடிவே சென்னை நங்கநல்லூர் சென்னை நங்கநல்லூர் சிறந்து விளங்கும்
how can we talk about KVN and not talk about Niraval? Let me first tell you what Niraval is and why it's a challenging aspect in music. KVN was quite literally known as Niraval Narayana Swami. Niraval is you take uh, a line from the Kriti or the RTP and you explore it in different melodic structures but the general pace and the placement of the lyrics remain the same as given by the composer, right? It is multitasking of sorts because you have to be able to uh, melodically explore the ragam and the lyrics have to be intact, the placement has to be intact and over and above all of this, of course the pace should be the same and over and above all of this you should be able to emote the lyrics. It's very difficult to do. It is in fact the highest, in, in terms of complexity, it is the highest form of Manodharma in Carnatic music. He was known for his nerval singing and a lot of thought has gone behind his nerval singing. He has spoken again at the in the lecture demonstration, he has spoken about how you shouldn't exhaust all the lyrics towards the beginning of the nerval, nor cram it towards the end where to insert the akarams and at the same time you shouldn't lose the integrity of the pronunciation of the words, right? If you say manikam vairam, abdina manikam vairam ne kekanu. It should be heard as manikam vairam and not ma ni kam, not like that, right? So it should be heard as manikam. So he was very insistent upon all of this and uh, it clearly shows in his nerval singing. Uh, a classic example, all of us know the Hecharika Garara the Nerevel at Ninu Juda. and the Kala Pramanam, again I am going to go to that Kala Pramanam or the pace of the song So he has maintained that pace Nanguram Nusulu in Tamil that is, he has really anchored that pace. Um, again, Raghu sir has really, he has explored a lot of solas, a lot of complex solas. And it's very easy to be confused if you don't have that, that Brahmalayam or that, uh, you know, rhythmic poise. He has just breezed through this nerval. <laughs> On the Saripa Maga Padrathaka, you need a certain uh, or flamboyance. The flamboyance beyond having to maintain the Kala Pramanam. It's a very tricky thing. You would be panicking. In fact, your creativity will take a hit if you are not a seasoned musician like Shikavian. Your music will take, like your creativity will definitely take a hit. And you will never think of such phrases. You will be sticking to the regular Yadukla Kambodhi, at least I would. But um, this was very interesting to see.
another nerval that i want to talk about is uh, by the way we we should be very thankful that we have high quality recordings of his concerts uh, we are very very lucky the natavanchi nripalaka in pahi parvata arabi natavanchi nripalaka vamsha shubodaya natavanchi this is the line the challenge i see here as a musician is first of all it starts in atitam the next is that there is so many words it's kind of crowded so to deliver a nerval in this is very tricky it's just one avartanam so it's very tricky to bring in all the words and not mess up only when you go back and think about these things you'll really notice that it's a difficult thing when he sings it seems very very simple he's made it seem very simple he's packed so much raga lakshana in it which is almost close to impossible because there are so many words you'll hardly have time for melody and yet he's managed to do it really it is it boggles my mind how he has managed to do it
is another topic that i want to talk about in this particular naraval he has really taken his time he has explored the naraval in blocks like one hour thanam then he is there are some silences he has really taken his time to explore naraval in this and such flamboyant phrases like very offbeat phrases we hear uh, i thought this naraval was very interesting and the swarams that follow it so let us listen to that Ramuda 
In this context of Nerevel, there is another clip that you will really enjoy, I think. It is of the Ragam Thanam Pallavi, Kana Kedekumo Sabeshan Darishanam Kandal Kalitiyam. This is the lyrics, these are the lyrics of the RTP. It is an Usi Pallavi, as in Usi Pallavi means the lyrics fall very offbeat. Right, I'll show you, it's in Mishra Chapu. Takketa takka dimmi takketa takka. Kana ki dai ku mo sa de shan da ri sha nam. Kandal ka li ti ru me ye ka na ki dai ku mo go go sa de shan da ri sha nam. And when he sings it, it seems very simple. But do you see the complexity? of this Pallavi, it's an Usi Pallavi, Yellame, you know, it, it creates a jump because it's not on beat. There's a lot of gaps. Kittatata, there are, I think, approximately six carways, seven carways, etc. It's very difficult to nirnayam or manage such Pallavis. And um, nowhere do you see any panic setting in. He was very comfortable in those gaps, very comfortable. He didn't feel the need to fill those spaces with akarams. So there is a perfect balance between silences and, you know, frills and trills. It's just the perfect balance. And of course, I have to mention Raghu sir's godlike support for this Pallavi. Please enjoy. <laughs>
Ragam Tanam Pallavi in one raga itself is difficult. He has also done raga malika in this. And of course the switch is seamless.
evolution as a musician over time is very very apparent he came from a very impressionable a very reputed school and yet he was he had he has managed to break out of that and create his own style which is not an easy thing to do i think this came from uh, drawing inspiration from many other musicians and incorporating several other styles into his music uh i can very clearly see influences of shri mdr in his music is at some point it has shifted to a very plain note based or rather more of plain notes we can see in his music over time uh, it is believed that he listened to a lot of mdr and of course mushri uh, then the sannama that is the soft production of the voice and the modulations definitely scream mushri and uh, of course brinda vishwa dhanamal bala saraswati that school this is i think because of his uh, stint as a visiting professor at wesleyan university where he literally lived across the hall from uh, vishwa sir and uh, brinda ma and bala saraswati so i think he they used to practice a lot together and he learned a lot of krutis from them we can definitely see the influence on his repertoire for example janaroi marubari taalalenuga and krishnani begane baro these are songs that he has included in his repertoire and he has aced all of them the janaroi his rendition of janaroi you can clearly see that influence and the way he has incorporated their style into his music this is really divine clipping i usually stay away from using the word divine but this is to me really a divine and spiritually elevating recording let's listen to that sagim pagale ne janaro imo gamele sagim pagale ne ye janaro gimbagale ne janaro imo gamele 
सगी बगल मानी जाल मेला मारू बारी को मानी जाल मेल मारू बारी को बगल मानी मानी जाल मेल मानी जाल मेल मानी also beautifully and very subtly changed his paatantram uh, we can clearly see his rendition of a certain kriti in his early days and how it has changed over the years to suit you know certain uh, changes that came about his voice due to age health etc you know his rendition of devi brova in uh, his 70s and then how it changed in the 90s we can clearly see the difference समय विजय अति वेग में वज देवी रोव समय विजय अति वेग में वज देवी रोव समय विजय अति
ಸೋದರಿ ಗೌಮಾರಿ person who didn't really believe in rigidity of paatantaram or you know the the strictness of adherence to the paatantaram he didn't really believe in that in fact his students say that he used to teach with notation which was mostly in malayalam but in his concerts he never used to stick to what he taught them it just goes with the flow and the you know whatever the conditions that day so as such he was not a big believer in paatantaram or even we hear he was not a uh believer in theory even though he he liked to know about and keep himself well informed about theory he made that switch he switched it all off and just concentrated on the music when he you know was singing this just goes to prove that he constantly put thought into his music and he beautifully adapted seamlessly adapted different styles um uh, improved his repertoire and made subtle changes according to the changes in his voice etc my biggest fear as a musician is stagnation and he's an inspiration to constantly keep growing adapting and evolving kvn created a certain soundscape which of course circles back to his voice production uh, his fidelity to shruti shuddham um, and his almost ocd to tuning the tanpura he was able to create a certain space filled with his sonorous voice with nadam nadam is the word that comes to mind when you listen to his music he was able to manage this till the very last breath too this is possible only if music is your only language of expression right there's nothing contrived about it uh we can we are going to listen to his last that is a uh, last available recording of his uh recorded by charsur the intasaukhya manine everything was the same all that he believed in was intact until his very last breath and uh, tend to get very emotional when you listen to this manine javaja
This being KVN's centenary year, I think it's befitting uh, to really acknowledge and ponder his intentions, his musical intentions. They were not just to entertain. He set out to elevate as well, right? Uh, it was a perfect middle ground between the Kacheri Bigusugu or Kacheri craft and music for the sake of music. There were elements of both in his music. We often see audience leaving a concert, maybe discussing about the concert list or critically analyzing the concert. But everyone left KVN's concert in complete silence and or in tears. Such was his music. <laughs>